good to be here. I'm a solutions architect at AWS. Um, fun fact, maybe not so fun fact, but interesting. I used to work in public sector for a number of years and uh, law enforcement. So at a police department, wasn't an officer though. I was a, still an IT side of things, which makes sense to today. But I helped them create like a computer forensic lab. So they were doing all the kind of computer and phone forensic stuff. So it was really a kind of a unique and exciting way to give back to the community. Um, with that in mind, let me jump in here to our topic at hand. So um, moving from insights and action. So we're going to talk about, I think, the convergence of MCPs with um, Cloud Custodian and what I've visualized becomes somewhat of the future. So first, let me set the stage on kind of what's the problem that we're trying to solve. And this is the same problem that I think exists regardless of AI. And it's that, you know, as FinOps practitioners, as people that are looking through, you know, spend trying to deal with governance, any of those things, there's tends to be insight overload. So we get, for one, a lot of different places to look for information. So whether that be dashboards, email, chats, but we also get a lot of different sources as well. So it could be like anomaly detections, different dashboards also for that, like, you know, budget alarms, bills, cost data, you know, any kind of like CloudWatch or resource monitoring type platform. And because of that, it becomes really hard to understand how to prioritize and where to put our efforts and our actions. Sorry about that. So I think what the result of this, if we just kind of leave things the way that they are, is we end up obviously fatigue, trying to do more with less as the environments that we're in keep growing and just the quantity of data and alerting and signals coming in keep growing. Also, it tends to delay decisions because there's a lot more to go through so we can find that actionable data um, a lot more slowly. And then like close to my heart, working in kind of cost optimization on a daily basis is just wasted spend. Like I don't, you know, the, the slower we are to be able to go and take action and remediate these things, the slow, you know, more wasted spend that we have to deal with. So I think today really my goal is to kind of do a little bit of a thought experiment of th like take off the guardrails and imagine kind of using AI and some of these tools, where can the future of this go? You know, obviously, yes, in all of our corporations, we have, a million different exceptions of like, well, we have a security process or we have all these different things. And all of those things are conquerable and navigatable with as much red tape as we, you know, we have to kind of sift through. But those aside for a minute, I think it's important every now and then to kind of ideate and think of like, what's the art of the possible so that we can figure out, you know, how can we move at least in the direction of making our jobs a little easier or being able to sift through all that information in a more automated fashion. So this is where MCPs kind of enter the picture. I'm not going to go very deeply into what MCPs are, but to say at a high level, it gives AI the ability to use and talk to things in a standardized format. So it gives them tools, gives them um, ability to interact with things and go change and do stuff versus just a static, you know, chatbot, give me an answer kind of scenario. At AWS, we recently launched a billing and cost management MCP server, which to me is a step in the right direction of consolidating some of the different places that we need to go and seek out information. This particular MCP looks across tools like Cost Explorer, Anomaly Detection, our Compute Optimizer and Optimization Hubs, which just look for optimization opportunities, and even tap into things like Storage Lens, which give storage and bucket level, like deep analytics that aren't even available in the cost data. And what these types of MCPs do is they'll help turn kind of that raw data that would be very complicated to go sift through all those resources into actionable insights with just natural language, just the way you would ask, you know, a colleague or a friend, hey, where can I find this? Or what's my top opportunity for that? This particular MCP server is one of 61 that are currently available. So there's other ones out there that for things like CloudWatch and other really powerful stuff. But for the sake of this example, we're just going to be thinking about this one. So MCPs will absolutely help with the prioritization element of the equation. It's going to help us understand and sift through all of that to bubble up the top priorities. But even when we have prioritization, the next side of that coin is, well, how do we take action? 
And Cloud Custodian is the perfect tool for taking action because for one, it seamlessly integrates across services. You know, in my case, AWS, so Lambda, CloudWatch, all the different services that we have, it has support for, for them. And if it doesn't, they're regularly adding for new services. Also integrates with other clouds, which is excellent. The compliance as code bit is extremely important so that we can look into governance and traceability. Some of the things that we've talked about here on previous calls are being you know, exceptionally important. So if those you know, policy YAML files, we can track back what they are, what they did, who approved them. And then it's a you know, unified policy engine. So now instead of having to go build custom things or use multiple AWS services, you really have one centralized tool that can span across all of those things, which in, in my perspective makes management you know, a little easier and more centralized. And then ultimately to be able to proactively enforce cost savings is where I like to see the customers that I work with get. I think it's um, natural to be in a state of kind of reactive initially as we see, you know, anomalies pop up or, you know, we get an exec that something showed up on a report that they didn't particularly agree with. You know, our, our focus can shift directions quite a bit, but if we have proactive, you know, monitoring and guardrails and, and actions in place, we can avoid a lot of those types of conversations. And then lastly, I kind of touched on this in the last bullet, but, but enabling these capabilities through automation. The reality of it is like, you know, our teams and our people can't scale as fast as the technology is growing. So it's going to be more and more important that we find ways to solve these things technologically to augment, enhance what we're doing, not to replace it. So let's talk about a couple of use cases, and then I will touch on kind of a high level um, architecture of what this could look like. So first use case here is just in a, um, I have it set up in a chatbot using that billing and cost management MCP. And I'm seeking out S3 buckets that have multi-part uploads. So the prompt, as you can see in the top of the screen was just what S3 buckets do I have that have greater than zero incomplete multi-part uploads? And then they do not have a lifecycle policy set up to clean up those multi-part uploads. And then I specifically added the second part, provide the output in a like account number comma bucket comma total MPU size format because we'd want to instruct it to give us the output in some type of format that we can use so that when we instruct Cloud Custodian to be able to take action, it has it in a format that it can read. And as you can see, this was just in my account. So it was this, you know, a single bucket that, that had some incomplete multi-part uploads and also didn't have a policy set on it to get rid of that. Another simple example would be to find any um, EBS GP2 volumes that have not yet been converted to GP3. And similar to ask it, just provide it in a specific format, right? Give me the account ID, the region, volume ID, basically the information that I would need to be able to create a cloud custodian policy to go automatically remediate this stuff. So what does this look like? So when we take MCPs the, uh, with a prompt and the right output and pair it with cloud custodian, we can get automation in results. Kind of following some of um, FinOps Foundation's crawl, walk, run philosophy, like what would this look like in a crawl stage? So crawl stage, we would manually input prompts to use an MCP to find high priority opportunities. And then we'd manually go and create cloud custodian policies to remediate them. So heavy on the manual, but it would still be speeding things up here because we're getting that benefit of the prioritization from the MCPs and the automation from cloud custodian. In the walk stage, though, we might have that MCP automatically in that chat using AI automatically trigger at certain points to find high priority opportunities. But then we still might want to kind of manually create and do the cloud custodian piece. But in the run stage, this could be largely completely automated. We have sp very specific inputs that we're asking of AI and the MCP to look for opportunities. And then it can automatically create the policy to go remediate it. Certainly, a lot of people get kind of gung shy of full automation, so there could be kind of a human in the loop approval step in there if we needed there to be. So, with this, just thinking through this type of model would be shifting from kind of that detective, preventative, you know, to a more of a preventative, proactive state. And here's what I would visualize the, and this is something I also tested kind of on my own machine, running it in, in my accounts. This is what the kind of infrastructure would look like. We'd have some kind of AI of your choice using this billing and cost management MCP. Prompt going in just like the use cases that I gave you. And then it hands off that output of whatever the top findings are that need to be actioned to some kind of specific um, 
layer that's going to do the cloud custodian. So like EasyOps made an MCP, I think Mary was mentioning Stacklet. So basically something that can understand and help formulate the cloud custodian um, policies for you. Now, if you already have cloud custodian policies built that are approved inside of your organization, you wouldn't necessarily even need this step. You could just go lean on the existing policies and execute those automatically. And then I threw in here optional approval step, right? If, if this was being triggered in an automated or like an agentic type of workflow, we still may want an approval of somebody to say, yeah, I bless this before action gets taken. Because there's, as we all know, there's exceptions to every rule, right? Like even the GP2 to GP3 example, maybe for some reason, some organization has a special use case where they have to use GP2. Well, if that's the case, we don't want to automatically be replacing it to GP3, you know, every day when we run this script. So we want some kind of, you know, exception process here potentially. And if there is, you could absolutely, you know, build that in. But then the net output of this though, with pairing the prioritization plus the policies from Cloud Custodian would be able to execute that and automatically take action on the resources that are environment. So trying to move a little bit quickly here so we stay on time. And I wanted to leave a few minutes too to ask questions if, if anybody had any discussion, but some of the things we discussed, right? The problem that we're all more or less dealing with in one way, shape or form is insight overload and then finding ways to be able to take action. And that action can sometimes be big or small, right? Sometimes the challenge with action is there's a lot of small things to fix across a lot of accounts. And that would be hard to do in a manual way and then sometimes wouldn't justify the human effort to go do it for the cost or the engineering time. But if we could figure out a way to do it, in this case, in an automated way, it absolutely does make sense. MCPs can be used for prioritization, not just this billing and cost management, but there are absolutely other ones like CloudWatch and different tools that can look at resource level utilization to target and find things and prioritize things in even a more granular way. So a lot of the root cause that you would go do and dig around in a console or multiple separate dashboards, you can get now really quickly through the use of the, you know, some kind of AI with, with an MCP. And then Cloud Custodian, I'm, you know, grateful to be on this call. I'm preaching to the choir, so I don't have to tell everybody what Cloud Custodian's capabilities are. But for automation and taking action, I mean, it's second to none in my opinion. I think it works really well and it, its support for things is broad. That's the two major requirements for the, like, at least the customers that I work with because they use a very broad set of services across AWS. So having something that only works on a small set wouldn't work or having something that requires very complex permissions and a series of like linked accounts also wouldn't work. And thankfully Cloud Custodian helps navigate both of those things. So pairing these together to me is the future of automating some of these things that aren't just prescriptive rules that is dynamic. It's gonna be able to automatically look for things like the top opportunities, provide the output in a way that the cloud custodian um, input can ingest and create policies around. So this has a high, high likelihood to be able to just automatically remediate, take care of things in your accounts without much, if any, manual effort. And we went through a couple of use cases, but the use cases are endless here, right? Any of the um, environment, you know, examples that you're dealing with in your environment from right-sizing stuff or scheduling things that, that may show up in dev, non-product QA accounts, there's, there's a million different opportunities with the use cases, but um, you know, that's going to largely be dependent upon your environment, your use case. And then lastly, um, we talked kind of through the high level architecture and I wanted to provide at least a link here. I'll put it in the chat too. I imagine you may will kind of help share some of these decks after the fact. But this is a link directly to the MCP server I referenced, but that's kind of like the buzzword right now. Anyway, there's MCPs everywhere for a, a bunch of different things you know, don't necessarily limit yourself to it. And if you're, even if you're not a huge AWS environment, there's MCPs for, for Google and Azure and a lot of the other platforms too. So think about how you could take a variant of this and do it in your environment. So with that said, I don't know if we're over time, you may up, I'll pause here for a second if any folks have any questions. If not, I can uh, hand it off for you to keep on your schedule.